So for today's video, I'm going to be doing a buy this, don't buy that video. So I've actually done this before on my channel and essentially it's just a big comparison video. For today's video, I wanted to talk about specifically similar drugstore and affordable makeup products. So I did an entire full face of drugstore comparisons, but because I understand that, you know, not everyone has the same preferences as me and makeup, I'm going to definitely still tell you, you know, the product that I would invest in, but I'll also give you a really in-depth look at both products so that if you have a different preference than me, you'll really be able to tell which one truly works the best for you. So hopefully that ends up being really helpful for you guys. So if you guys do enjoy today's video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you like me, I would love to have you back. So make sure to subscribe before you go. And if you think that you're already subscribed, definitely make sure to check because there have been some people that I've subscribed to for a really long time and YouTube has unsubscribed me. It's really weird, but definitely make sure to check. So again, as I mentioned, we are doing a full face. So what better way to start off your makeup than with a good primer? Personally, I love a good glowy primer to really add some really pretty dew into my skin. We're going to be comparing the AOA Studio Wonder Skin Illuminating Primer, only $1, <laughs> to the NYX High Glass Primer. I wanna first start off with the AOA Wonder Skin because I think that this is such a unique product. So again, it's $1 and you get 0.67 ounces of product in here. This is definitely more of a kind of glow lotion product, but the actual appearance of the skin when you apply it is very, very unique to me. It's almost reminiscent of the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. Not a sticky lotion product. It's not a really heavy lotion product. And yet it just adds that incredible glossiness to your skin. And it's also a really, really thin kind of pearlized look. It's not a really chunky glittery look. It just gives you that ultra, just glassy looking skin. So if you're someone that needs a short cut to a really dewy, glossy look. This is definitely a product that I would highly recommend. Really an all around great texture. So if you are looking for a really, really affordable, really glassy looking primer, this is absolutely one that I would recommend. One of my subscribers actually recommended this. Oh my God, what is in my eye? Yeah, one of my subscribers actually recommended this one to me and I'm so, so happy that they did. But let's say that you really want a nice glow to your skin, but you lean a little bit more on the combination to oily side. I think that's where I would come in and recommend the NYX High Glass Primer. Retails for around $8. I think it is on sale right now. You do get a full ounce of product and it comes in three different shades, which I really, really enjoy. So I actually have the shade Moonbeam and I really, really enjoy this color because it's not really, really yellow. It's not super, super warm. Personally, I find it a really pretty color, especially if you have more of a neutral skin tone. So when you put the high glass primer out onto the skin, the texture doesn't really feel that different from the AOA. It's a little bit thinner. It's not quite as hydrating. I think what changes is that the AOA leaves behind that really dewy, glassy looking finish. Whereas with the NYX High Glass, it's really to me more of like a lit from within glow. There is definitely a little bit more restraint with it. And I think that's what makes this a really ideal product for someone with a more combination and oily skin type. Because if you want that kind of juiciness to your skin, but you don't want to look like an oil slick, this product has a really nice balance. And with that kind of thinner texture, it's also not going to feel like a really heavy primer product. This also has some nice ingredients. It has glycerin and squalane in it. So I think for most of my looks, because I do have more dry skin, I really love the glassiness that this product gives my skin. The only thing that sucks is that you can only get it on the Shop Miss A website. I really, really like the NYX High Glass for how unique the shade is. I like that it's not going to be a really emollient, heavy primer. It gives you that really nice, soft touch of glow, but again, it doesn't feel like it's going to be too heavy or emollient. Now, personally, for my skin type and what I usually like, I would go with the AOA, but I have to say that I'm very impressed with this one as well. Next, let's talk about some base products. 
products. So I have two. I would honestly classify these as kind of tinted moisturizer products. So I have the Revlon Candid Glow and the NYX Bear With Me Tinted Skin Veil. Today what I did is applied the AOA Studio all over my skin and then I went in with the NYX Bear With Me. But let's first talk about the Candid Glow from Revlon. So it retails anywhere from eight to $11. It comes in 16 different shades. I'm the shade 110. You get 0.75 ounces of product in here. So that does suck. I mean, typically you would get a full ounce. So this is a very interesting product to me. I was initially thinking that this was going to be a product similar to the It Cosmetics CC Cream, but this really is not much like it other than the packaging. Um, this is called a kind of moisture glow foundation and I think that that's a little bit misleading. This to me is a really lightweight kind of tinted moisturizer product. Something that's really nice is how lightweight it is. It really feels weightless once it's on the skin and it has more of a skin-like finish. So it doesn't really have much glow, at least on my dry skin. To me, it really just sinks into the skin to give you that more skin-like finish. And if anything, because I have dry skin, I actually find that this can look a little bit flat on me. Um, even when I do go in with a glowy primer, I just find that this looks, it just looks a little bit more matte than I would personally like. But if you are someone with a more combination skin type, I feel like this is going to give you a really, really skin-like look. It wears pretty well on the skin because it's a little bit more of a thin texture. I often find that a thinner texture formula tends to be a little bit more long wearing, but personally with my dry skin, I need something with a little bit more emollients. I need something that doesn't look quite as flat as this does. Let's compare it to the NYX Bear With Me Tinted Skin Veil. This retails for $13 and you get 0.91 ounces of product in here. So it's not 0.75 ounces, but I gotta tell you, these brands need to come out with a full fluid ounce of product. It comes in 13 different shades and I am the shade Vanilla Nude. I think the shade is pretty good, but it is a little bit more yellow than I would typically like. And a lot of NYX products tend to lean a little bit more yellow. So that is something to keep in mind. I really like this because it's such a nice kind of everyday tinted moisturizer product. It's still very lightweight and very thin on the skin. It really sinks well into the skin. Again, it's what I have on my skin right now. It feels really lightweight. It looks looks really lightweight on the skin. But why I prefer this one to the Candid Glow is that it has a little bit more heft to it. It has a little bit more uh, creaminess. And I think that that creaminess on my skin type translates a little bit better and it looks a little bit more flattering. So something that's really nice about this is that it has a touch of a blur to it. It's very, very subtle, but I notice, especially when you have one product on one side of your face and then, you know, another product on the other, I can just see that my pores are a little bit less visible. I think the coverage is also a touch better. And I just think it's a little bit more flattering. Um, sometimes I do feel like the Candid can look a little bit drying on any of my fine lines. My skin is looking for just a touch more moisture and the NYX gives my skin that touch of moisture without it being a really, really glowy tinted moisturizer product. And I wanted to compare these two because I think that there's a lot of really, really glowy and dewy tinted moisturizer products. And to me, these are a little bit more balanced, a little bit more skin-like. And I think especially when we're wearing masks a lot, it's good to go for something a little bit less dewy. It's gonna last a little bit longer. Speaking of the actual wear of the product, I think that the NYX also wears really nicely. It doesn't break up on the skin. You know, on my chin tends to be where my foundation breaks up very quickly. And this just really stays put there and it kind of just blurs that area. I also have more pores on my chin. So personally, I would go with the NYX Bear With Me rather than the Candid Glow. Unless you have a little bit more of a combination skin type, I feel like you might appreciate this texture a little bit more. And next, let's talk about Concealer, one of my favorite products to talk about. So we are going to be comparing the Maybelline Fit Me, a product I've talked about quite a lot on my channel. And we're going to compare it to the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Hydrating Concealer. Being that I am someone with both dark circles and and some pretty severe dryness under my eyes, I really need a hydrating concealer that is also going to provide some coverage. 
So I wanna first start off with the Maybelline Fit Me because I talk a lot about it on my channel. It retails for around five to six dollars. It comes in 12 different shades and I am personally the shade fair. Now I have to say that I feel like recently they redid the packaging on the Maybelline Fit Me because the doe foot applicator is a little bit smaller than I remember it being. Again, I've used this for a very long time, so I noticed those little things. And I also feel like the fair shade is a little bit peachier than it used to be. Let me know down below if you have noticed that. So the reason I really like the Maybelline Fit Me In and have for so long is that I just feel like it's a really balanced product. Concealer itself is thin. It's definitely more of a liquidy concealer, but it has a touch of creaminess to it. So it's not one of those really, really thin concealers that I personally think can look a little bit drying under my eyes, but it's not a really, really thick concealer that I also think sometimes can look a little bit obvious and look a little bit heavy. So this has a really, really nice balance to it. It just doesn't make the under eyes look really hollow. There are some concealers that they do cover your darkness, but somehow exaggerate any hollowness that you have under your eyes. So your eyes can look brighter, but somehow still look dark because it doesn't conceal the hollowness. And really that's playing around a little bit with light, but some formulas work better at concealing that hollowness and kind of tricking the eye than and some formulas do. And this formula in particular is really good at kind of building on itself. You can add one light layer and then go in just where that hollowness is and really kind of conceal it. And it reflects back light to kind of flatten out the area. And it just looks really flattering. And for a long time, I was struggling with concealers because a lot of them covered the darkness, but it somehow still made my under eyes look dark. This one's also nice because it's hydrating. It doesn't make my under eyes look scaly. It doesn't exaggerate any of the dryness that I have. So overall, it's just a concealer that I've used for a long time and have loved for a long time. But let's talk about the CoverGirl Clean Fresh. So when I initially tried this one, I wasn't a huge fan because I do think that this concealer can look a little bit drying sometimes on me. Now I have to say that I'm very, very picky with concealers. Obviously, if you couldn't tell with my rant about the Maybelline, but I've grown a newfound appreciation for this concealer. So it retails for $11.99 and there are 14 different shades. I also forgot to mention the ounces of product. The Maybelline has 0.23 ounces of product and the CoverGirl has 0.23. So something I really like about the Clean Fresh concealer is the texture. So I was talking about a little bit earlier that some thin concealers can look really drying under the eyes. This one manages to be very, very thin and almost kind of watery, but it doesn't look super drying under the eyes. Hydrating is a good word because I think some concealers are a little bit more moisturizing. It's definitely not as emollient. So there's something just really interesting about the texture. It definitely reflects back a lot of light, so it looks brightening under the eyes. The coverage is buildable, but it's certainly a little bit more sheer. I definitely see some people really liking this concealer, especially if you want more of a kind of sheer coverage concealer under the eyes that's very lightweight. You want something that's still hydrating, but it's just going to look a little bit thinner under the eyes. Both of these do crease, but because the Maybelline is just a touch thicker than the CoverGirl, this creases faster, which honestly, I'm not a person that really minds when my concealer creases because I can just tap out the creases under my eyes. But yeah, as I've continued to use this, I definitely think it would be nice for someone that does want that really lightweight, sheer, coverage under the eyes. By the way, I have the shade 320 Fair. Personally, I will always love the Maybelline Fit Me. It's not even a fair comparison because this has just been a holy grail for so long. But if you want something a little bit thinner, more on the hydrating side, use a really clean kind of fresh look. And now let's talk about some bronzers, specifically cream bronzers, because you guys know that I'm a huge cream product fan. So we are going to be comparing the Physicians Formula Sculpting Bronzer to the LA Girl velvet bronzer. Let's first start off with the Physicians Formula Sculpting Bronzer. So I've talked about this before on my channel because 
I think that a good cream bronzer at the drugstore can just be really difficult to find. And this is one of those options that I always recommend for those of you that are looking for one that's both affordable and just has a good quality formula. So it retails for $12, you get 0.3 ounces and it comes in two different shades. So I have the shade Toffee, it's a little bit more of that warm bronzer shade. This is a really nice creamy, cream bronzer. It has more of a light to medium pigmentation. It's definitely more buildable and there's just something about this that looks really, really natural. I love a cream bronzer that just truly looks like tanned skin. I don't want something that is not really going to give you the illusion. There is a downside to the formula though. I think when Physicians Formula was creating the cream bronzer, they didn't whip and emulsify the oils and the butters properly in here because you will get these little balls in the formula. I've definitely gotten other comments too of people saying that they have had the same issues, but because this is such an emollient product, um, it blends out perfectly fine. And when you warm it up on the hand, those balls of product melt with it. So it's not something that I personally mind, but I did want to mention it. But let's compare it to the LA Girl Velvet Bronzer. It retails for $6. There are are three different shades within the bronzer line and you get 0.2 ounces of product. So I wanted to compare these two specifically, not just because they're cream stick bronzer products, but because I think they're going to give you something a little bit different. The LA Girl Velvet Bronzer is more of a cream to powder formula. So it's going to be a little bit more suitable for those of you that like cream products, but you need something to last a little bit better and you just prefer a more velvety look to your cream products. This also has a little bit more pigment. This is going to give you the pigmentation a little bit quicker than the Physician's Formula will. I think it blends really well too. Um, sometimes because I have more dry skin, if I'm dealing with texture issues, cream to powder formulas, tend to be something that don't really jive with my skin. If you want a little bit more of that velvety cream bronzer look, I would go with the LA Girl. But, you know, personally, I prefer something a little bit more natural, something that looks really natural on the skin, and the Physician's Formula is that for me. And next we have blush. So I have two cream blushes to compare. I have the Honest Beauty Cream Cheek Blush and the new Cheek Kiss Cream Blush from Milani. So let's first talk about the Honest Beauty Cream Cheek Blush. Again, I have Pink Peony. It retails for around $13, depending on where you get it. You get 0.10 ounces of product, and they come in four different shades. Something that you'll first notice right off the bat is that these are quite white pigmented. I would say the pigmentation is about medium to high pigmentation. This will really, really give you that pop of colors, but this cream blush blends so perfectly on the skin, so effortlessly. No matter what foundation you have on, no matter if you've powdered the skin, really no matter what is going on with your makeup, this blends perfectly every single time you wear it. It has a little bit more of a denser cream blush texture and something about this texture just makes it go onto the skin perfectly every single time. I still to this day really don't know what it is. Just perfect even pigmentation. It really melts into the skin without it being a really dewy product either. It's certainly more on the natural side. You can share it out, you can build it up. It's a really, really versatile product. It lasts really well on the skin. This is definitely one of my favorite cream products of all time and I just really, really highly recommend it. Just every single time I wear it, I find that it's a good cream blush day. So yes. Very, very, very much a fan of these. I'm wearing the shade Peony Pink on my skin and I'll add a little bit more just so you guys can see how freaking easy it is to apply. completely melts into the skin and glides on without giving you a lot of extra dew or emollients. It doesn't slip around on the skin. Just look at that. That literally took just a few seconds and it just really, really pops the skin. Again, I just, I couldn't be more happy with these. But let's talk about the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blushes. So they come in four different shades. I have all four actually, but I'm talking specifically about Nude Kiss. They retail for $8.99 and you get 
21 ounces of product in here. So this texture is more on the thin side, but it's a little bit more melty. Um, it definitely feels a little bit more emollient. But for me, it actually kind of goes from a cream to a powder. It's not a true powder finish though, but it certainly kind of sets down and melts down into the skin for a more skin-like texture. It's not going to remain really dewy on the skin or too emollient. These definitely also pack some pigment punch. For me, it's a little bit more of a kind of juicy looking pigment, whereas the Honest Beauty, I feel like it's more of like a diffused kind of blotted look. But for me, these feel like they have a little bit more translucence, just a little bit more of that kind of juicy looking color. They have a really nice soft glow to them. In general, I find that they blend really nicely. If you prefer a little bit more of a thin texture, but more of a juicy kind of looking cheek color, I think that you'll probably prefer these to the Honest Beauty. Again, just because you can see the Honest Beauties are really kind of diffused flushed look whereas i feel like the milani just they just have a little bit more translucence to them again both are good i would say personally go with the honest beauty but again i think some people will really enjoy the milani and next let's talk about some cream shadows so i have two to compare obviously we have the essence melted chrome eyeshadow and the ulta beauty bouncy cream shadow these are two really underrated products so i wanted to compare them and give them a little spotlight. So let's first start off with the Essence Melted Chrome Eyeshadow. So this is the one that I've been trying out recently. It's actually what is on the inner portion of my eyes today. It's the shade 01 Zinc About You. They come in six different shades. You get 0 0.07 ounces and they retail for $4.99. So right away, this is a little bit more of that squishy shadow texture reminiscent of the Super Shock shadows from ColourPop. You can see it just kind of gives in in when you press your finger into it. I really like these kind of squishy um, cream shadow products. I find that they just are really easy to stick a finger into the pan and just apply to the lid. And that's definitely the case with this one as well. Super, super easy to apply. And it's more of a thin creamy texture. So it's not a really emollient uh, shadow. So if you prefer a shadow that's more on the thin side, but you still want that light and that color, this one is definitely one I would recommend. The pigment is certainly there. Um, I think melted chrome is a good way to describe these because it's quite intense. The glow that you get from these is definitely there. So if you really like metallic looking shadows, this one is certainly metallic. It will give you that shine. Personally, this one on its own, I feel like this just needs a little bit more of a frame for it, just this shade in particular. So what I did today is I went in with my Rowan 52 degree palette and I took this more purpley shade and I put it on the outer corners. And I noticed when using these together, you know, this could honestly pass as a Rowan shadow when you frame it with the right colors. Like it's just a really, really metallic high shine, um, very, very pretty look. I really don't go for strong metallics a lot, but I feel like this is just such a good bang for your buck. Really, really brings that light to the lid. It will eventually crease on you. Um, if you're looking for a really, really long wear shadow, I don't think that this is crease proof by any means. But the texture and the emollients I think is what makes this look so good on the lids. A lot of really long wear and shiny shadows. I mean, those things don't go together really easily. A lot of the times if you do have a more long wear, shiny, glossy looking shadow, it can just end up looking a little bit dry on the skin. This obviously definitely does not. It looks really, really glossy and pretty. But I would definitely say if you're looking for something more natural, it's probably not your best bet. I would personally go with the Ulta Beauty Bouncy Cream Shadows if you want something that's more perfect for every day. They come in eight different shades. You get 0 0.08 ounces, retail for $9. Personally, the shade that I'm comparing today is the Italian Ice Shade. This one's my favorite. Unfortunately, it did shatter. These do shatter easily, unfortunately, but it doesn't affect the texture of the product. Like it still applies really nicely, so I don't really mind. So this is again, more of that kind of squishy consistency. It's a little bit less emollient than the essence and I think that's just because this is like a melted kind of chrome product whereas this is way more on the subtle side it's a little bit thinner it's not as deeply um, shiny and pigmented this has more of a sheer base to it with a bunch of really 
pretty fine glitters throughout. It's so pretty if you just want that like nice wash of color with just that touch of glitter. It's very, very everyday, um, daytime appropriate. It's just really simple, sheer, and pretty. It's just so easy to get a one and done everyday shadow look with these. It's effortless, but it's impactful. You know, it adds that definition. And I love that it reflects back all of that pretty light. I have a lot of different shades of the Ulta Beauty ones. Um, I've become a really big fan of them. So yeah, for these, I think it's really just gonna depend on what you're looking for. So if you want that ultra shiny look, um, I think that the Essence one will give it to you. But if you want something a little bit more sheer for every day, I think that the Ulta Beauty is the way to go. Next, let's talk about mascaras. And we have two mascaras that say they will give you a false lash effect. So we are going to be comparing the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara to the Maybelline The Falsies Lash Lift. First, starting off with the one from Essence. So this retails for $4.99, which is incredible. Very, very budget friendly. You know, it really took me a long time to try this. I mentioned this in my best of beauty for 2020. Yeah, it took me a while to try it, but I'm just so glad that I finally did. This is one of the most, just really one of the most gorgeous mascaras I've ever used. It really gives you that ultra, ultra lifted look to your lashes. When I'm telling you that you put this into your lashes, and your lashes just go sky high, like the proof is in the pudding. Like take a look at the demo. I'm always surprised at how long and lifted my lashes look, but it's not a spidery lengthened look. Like it still has a nice blackness to it. It has a nice weight to it. The lashes still kind of hold their own. It's not a really, really awkward looking lash. They just have that nice elegant, fluttery look to them. I like that the base of the lashes have a little bit more volume, but the formula kind of tapers at the end of the lashes. So it's not like long, straight black lashes that are the same kind of dimension all the way through which also I think can look a little bit awkward. These have a nice fluffiness to them. Just an ultra fanned out and fluttery look. So yeah, honestly, for all of my more dramatic eye looks, I tend to go for this mascara. I can wear it really with a no makeup makeup look as well. But if I really want that drama, if I want those really long lashes without a clumpiness or without too much volume, this is the one that I go for. And let me tell you, I'm not a fan of a really clumpy, heavy looking volumized lash. What I like about this is that you don't have to pick. You don't have to pick between volume and length. You get all of it without clumps. So yeah, very, very much a favorite. But let's now talk about the Maybelline, the Falsies Lash Lift. It retails for around 10 49 so certainly more expensive than the Essence. So the Essence has more of that kind of long cone shaped wand, whereas this one is more of that kind of hourglass shape where the middle is a little bit thinner and then it fluffs out at each end. I actually think that this mascara gives a lot of separation. It tends to pull lashes together to give you a lengthened, but very kind of separated look. What's kind of different about it is that it doesn't make you look like you have more lashes. I tend to like when my lashes look really fluffy and that there's just a lot of them. This I think kind of collects the lashes together and lengthens them up. If you like more separation rather than um, true definition of every lash. I think that this is really nice for that separated look. It also gives you a lot of volume at the base of the lash. It really kind of fluffs up that area. I don't think it's a bad mascara. Um, it wears really nicely too, but when you compare it to the Essence, I feel like this is that true false lash effect that looks natural and pretty. Whereas the Falsies, the Lash Lift, I feel like it doesn't do as good of a job at really pulling the lashes up. I don't think the lashes look as weightless. I think they look a little bit heavier, but really not a bad mascara. Um, but for $5, I just really feel like you can't go wrong with this one. Next, let's compare some highlights. So I want to compare the Flower Beauty Day Glow Highlighting Glaze to the Physicians Formula Dewy Highlighter. Let's first start off with the glaze from Flower Beauty. You get 0.12 ounces of product and it retails for around $10.99. They come in two different shades. I have the shade Stunner, and it's a really, really nice champagne shade that doesn't lean too yellow. So when you put your finger into this pan, it's actually quite a dense kind of balm formula. It's not one of those balms where you feel like you could 
you know, stick your finger all the way back into the pan. It is definitely on the thicker side. It's definitely balmy, but when you take your finger out of the product, you'll notice that it's still quite a thin balm. Very interesting formula, and I think the formula um, because of all that really translates beautifully on the skin. There are certainly some um, kind of stickier balm products that feel a little bit weird on the skin. I don't find this one to be particularly sticky, but it's definitely not lightweight. So if you want a very, very lightweight uh, highlight, then just wait till the next one we talk about. But if you are looking for that ultra balmy, glossy looking highlight to add on the tops of your cheekbones, I think that this is one of the best that I've tried. I like that it has um, a sheen to it. I like that it's not just clear balm pigment. And to me as a whole, it's a nice kind of glaze balm product because it's just amped up a little bit. There are certainly some balm highlight products that just feel like a little bit lackluster. This truly feels like that glazed, highlighted effect. So I think that this is perfect for someone that likes kind of everyday um, creamy makeup, but you wanna highlight with a little bit more pop. Maybe you're just not getting enough of that glossiness and that um, beautiful shine from some of your other more natural highlights. I would say this is kind of like the next step up. Let's compare it to the Physicians Formula Dewy Highlighter. I have the shade Dew Frost. This retails anywhere from eight to $11 and you get 0.3 ounces of product. This is a cream highlight that I think will work really well for someone that likes a cream formula, but wants something that looks a little bit more natural and a little bit softer on the skin. This allows you to get the convenience of a stick highlight while just looking almost like a baked highlight. This texture in this formula reminds me of kind of a baked formula, but in a stick. As a whole, I just find myself being a little bit underwhelmed. I usually just want a little bit more. Um, you know, if I'm gonna take the extra step to add highlight to my face, I want something that looks really pretty and glossy. And to me, I just feel like this doesn't give me enough shine, like I'm looking for a little bit more from it. But that being said, if you are someone that wants that more natural kind of baked looking highlight and you want to have a little bit more control and you want it to be a little bit more subtle, I think that this is one to look into. I do wish that this didn't look as frosty. I think there's a little bit of a frostiness to it that's not my favorite. So yeah, as a whole, I think if you really want that glazed donut kind of look, then the Flower Beauty is probably the way to go. But if you want something more subtle, um, the Physician's Formula is probably a better way to go. And next, let's talk about two different affordable lip glosses. So we have the ColourPop Lux Gloss and the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. I was wearing the one from Maybelline in the shade Moon, but I've been talking for quite a while now. So these come in 10 different shades. Again, I'm wearing the shade Moon and they retail for around $8.99. You get 0.18 ounces of product in here, so it's definitely a good amount of product. This is a really nice gloss if you like a very thin, formula. You don't want anything too heavy on the lips. This definitely is a thinner formula in my opinion. It's certainly more of an understated gloss. I do prefer the kind of shimmer shades to the cream formula within the line. I think the cream formula is a little bit odd. These kind of translucent colors with the soft shimmering pigments throughout, I think just look really nice. They look really flattering. They're not heavy on the lips. They reflect back just enough light and gives your lips just enough shine. I love that they give a little bit of definition, but not too much. Again, it's not too much pigment so that it looks a little bit too obvious. So I think that just makes it a really nice kind of everyday gloss product. Let's compare it to the ColourPop Luxe Gloss. Now, if you're a fan of a little bit more shine, you want a little bit more pigment, then this is probably where I would steer you towards. They retail for $8 and you get 0.16 ounces. I have mine in the shade Tied Up. It's a really nice kind of movie color. I'm actually a big fan of the color, but the formula tends to be not what I look for in a gloss because one, it's thicker, 
Um, it definitely has more pigment to it. So if you want more pigment, this will definitely give it to you, but it is a little bit more in the medium range. Pulls a little bit between the lips, but it will last longer on the lips than something like the Maybelline. The Maybelline, again, it'll fade off if you're just talking. The Luxe just looks a little bit frosty. Um, I noticed my lip lines a little bit more with this gloss. If you're looking for a juicy, kind of translucent, nice for everyday kind of lip gloss, Personally, the Maybelline is my favorite, but if you want a little bit more pigment and you want something that's going to last a little bit longer, um, I do think that this is a nice option. Yeah, so that was my full face of buy this, not that affordable products. Let me know down below if you guys enjoyed the video. I would love for you to subscribe if you also found it helpful, and I will see you in my next one.